Hey everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing and I am getting ready to finish the nativity pillow. I know, I never thought I would say those words. Me, I, I have a tr tough time getting stuff finished. So um, what I have here is I have my pieces. So I'm gonna show you how I press these and how I trim them. This is, I usually do, a, I'm gonna be using my pop ruler. I'm gonna be using my pop ruler for the six by eights and for the little skinny ones, I'm gonna be using my four and a half by 18 and a half inch ruler. I really like this one. So I'm gonna be using that. Um, I made piping and I do this on my serger with my five millimeter cording foot. So, uh, and th isn't this gorgeous? I don't even know if you can appreciate how gorgeous this fabric is, but this is uh, a grunge metallic gold fabric and it's beautiful. And I think it'll look fantastic as piping around the whole pillow. I really think piping makes the pillow. Um, I did finish my, if you're going to hear it, you're going to hear some whining and some door ringing for my dog. Uh, this is going to be the back. I am not going to do a scrappy back because I'm so behind with everything. So I'm actually going to use the half yard of fabric that came in the kit. And then um, this is my border, my inner border, my outer border. I did this yesterday and I pieced the whole thing um, and I sewed it together and then I quilted it. I really thought that was the quickest way to do it. Um, I would do it a little bit differently if I did it again, which I'm sure I will, where I would have done the placement line to lay down my um, my hooping. And I was able to do this in three hoopings instead of having to do these separately and these separately. And then I think I figured out it was gonna be like eight hoopings. This was three hoopings and it was fantastic. So let's go ahead and let's press everything out first. And let me go deal with those dogs, hang on. I don't really worry too much about puckers. Like if you look at this, it's pretty, I don't know, kind of lumpy and bumpy. I'm gonna press all of that so it's gonna look gorgeous. So I don't really worry about that as long as you have a wool mat, a good iron, some, hello, my iron's not turning on. Oh look, it's unplugged. I'm sure it was the dogs. Let me plug that in. Oh my goodness, and I was using my serger yesterday. I hadn't used my serger in a long time. I hadn't had any love. It was just wonderful. Okay, when I cut these apart, because, you know, I just, I can keep it on a continuous roll of muslin. Um, I usually cut it from the back side so I can see where the lines are. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these apart. My iron is heating up. And be careful not to cut the front piece. Although, I mean, this really is that outermost stitch is going to be your cutting line. Never cut directly on that line because as you stitch, usually your embroidery kind of pulls in a little bit, but it's a suggestion of where you should be um, trimming. So I'm going to take these. Oh my goodness, aren't they so cute? I've seen so many other people do some amazing things with these where they did... Um, uh, they use like different minkies and furs and they use cork and I just love seeing what everybody does. And someday when I'm not racing to get these done, I'm going to be creative too. For right now, I just read the directions, grab the kit and stitch, but that's okay. I enjoy it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This I can just leave the way it is and I'll press it. Um, I use my wool mat. Here's my wool mat on top of my, um, I use my wool mat on top of my cutting mat. And you've got to be careful of that because if you're using moisture, it can um, warp the mat below. So I'm just going to put this up here. And, you know, I usually press from the backside. I press from the back side. Oh my goodness. So Patrick and I went to the store today and I was like, okay, there's one more thing I need. And I couldn't remember what it was. And now I remember. And so I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this because I needed a roll of gold glitter. All right. Let's go ahead. Moisture. You want some moisture. You want to press it with the embroidery down. And I'm just going to press it along. I'm just going to, well, I'm not pressing, I'm ironing. 
press you just kind of put your iron your iron down this I'm going back and forth I don't think I can finish because I forgot I'll go from the back and then sometimes I'll go from the front too oh my goodness I can just tell it's gorgeous already you know how you just know We've gone to the store like every day because every time we go, I pick up something and <laughs> then I forget something. But it's okay because um, uh, I've needed to be down there anyways. So it hasn't been like out of my way. I can go like this too. Oh... My, my. So cute from the back, as you can see all the quilting. I did do blue on blue, so you don't, you know, kind of blends in. And my wool mat. This used to be, this was my favorite size, which is 17 by 17. And then I got the 17 by 24, and I was like, that is my favorite size. Because, you know, it's a little bit bigger. Sometimes you need that. Let's take a look from this side and see. Oh, it looks great. I'm not even going to press it from this side. And I like it because you can, like... You know, because there's batting behind it, you can see the quilting and it looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we'll trim these out in just a second. Let me move these to the side. With these, what I like to do is, again, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I can't see because the uh, camera is at my eye level, not below it. So I'm not seeing well. There wasn't a... A, you know, there wasn't a ton of stitching, so these all laid pretty nice and flat, but I still am going to press them. I'm going to give it a press from the backside, so moisture. And your goal is to have it lay flat. I am an aggressive ironer. So if anything fails me on my body, it's going to be my shoulders, and it's going to be from this. So if I was not filming, I'd be standing on my tippy toes pushing down, but I'm filming and so the camera's in my way and you just want it to lay nice and flat and be gorgeous. I don't know if I can wait. I might have to run to the store. I'm like in the mode. I'm in the mode to finish. I'm in the mood to finish. And uh, I don't say that very often. Usually I'm just in the mood to start another project. That's why Kimbergrill is so great for me because they always have something new, something new and shiny to distract me. Flat. Is that nice and flat? Yes, it is. It's gorgeous. I can't believe I forgot. Actually, I totally believe that I forgot. Okay, I'm not going to like make you watch this. I also want to move my camera out of the way so I can get some leverage. So let me press these out and then you can join me back again when I'm ready to trim them. Okay, I got to admit, I'm sweating a little bit. I was really giving it my all. But now we're ready to trim. I'm just looking for my um, rotating mat. So here is my rotating mat. And then here is my popper alert. And the one I'm using is this six by eight. You want to make sure that you have the little 
uh, the little grippies on it so it doesn't slide. And um, it's, I mean, almost easier to see from the back. You're, you're going right around the outer stitch and you are framing this the best you can. It's not going to be perfect. So I'm just going to put it on and um, I like to look from above. So I'm going to scoot this camera out of the way. I'm going to go like this. Here we go. Because you're going to see my head. Because I like to look from above, top, bottom, left, and right. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. So you can kind of see there's, you, you don't want to cut on that line because look, I'm almost like an eighth of an inch away from that line all the way around. Um, but it's pretty equidistant all the way around. So you're just looking for the best possible fit, but it's not going to be perfect. So don't worry about it. And then when you go to cut, you're going to hold your ruler down. You're going to take your rotary cutter, lean it into the side, and you're going to gently press down and cut. You can scoot your hand up as you go. When you turn, hold the whole thing and rotate it. Don't let go of the ruler and your project, your block, because what happens is if you just turn the rotating mat, then it just always moves. I don't even hear that cutting. Hang on. I didn't even hear that cutting. That could be a bad blade. And then we're going to turn. The other thing you don't want to do is do this. Run it and then run into your block, which I've done. Just take your time. Go nice and slow. Take your time. Hopefully that went through on all the sides. Ooh, it didn't sound like it was cutting over here. That's a bad, bad blade. Bad, bad, bad. So what I'm going to do is, um, we're good there. We're good here. And we are horrible over here and horrible over here. So I'm going to grab my, that was a, what not to do. Yeah, use a good blade. Otherwise, you're going to be suffering like I am right now. So this was six and a half by eight. Here, let's see. I think we, okay, this is just a demonstration what not to do. So I showed you don't use a dull blade. Don't suffer through that. There we go. Okay, we're gonna use this one instead. All right, let's do the next block. Next block, next block. Okay, here we go. Sometimes I, I talk to some of you and you've done like the whole project with me. So it's kind of like I'm at your house and we're stitching together and we're having so much fun. Okay, I'm going to do this with a, I don't even know if this blade is any good, but I know it's better than the last one. Why don't I just change it, you say, right? I don't know. I just like, I just like to suffer. I should change it. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to put a new blade in uh, and you'll see the difference. You know what you'll see is you'll see even the corners. What I notice is I get all the way to the corner when I'm using a brand new block, a uh, brand new blade. My issue is where did I put those blades? Of course, not where it would make sense. That would be silly. Okay, much better. I just have to get the corners. Much better. Here we go. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I love the pop rulers. The pop rulers are great. I'm not crazy about nesting, so a lot of times I will use other rulers when I have to nest that uh, fit the size. Oh, look at that. Can you believe this? Right in my, right in arm's reach. That is surprising. Let's get a new blade out. Remember these are, there's multiples usually. 
Well, it depends on what, what you buy. So. And. Hello. Why aren't you shutting? Okay, we're going to change out this one. I really like these because you just pull down to change. I mean, it's so much easier. I have some of the other ones, and uh, it gets really dirty in here, too. I'm going to wrap this up in, like, a paper towel. And somebody told me you're supposed to oil those. But do you see how I have some built-up lint in here? So let's get that out. Oh, my goodness. There's a ton in here. Look at that. Okay, here's my brand new nice blade. I'm gonna put this in here and just push up. So I have some of those where you have like all those moving parts and you have to keep track. You're like, okay, and I lay out each piece, like what goes on the left side of the blade and what goes on the right side of the blade. Sometimes I'll even take pictures and this I'm gonna go throw in the trash can. I have a trash can that I never reach my hand into. I'll be right back. Now let's see how amazing my next cut is. So let's grab this one. So you have uh, five of the blocks. Make sure you don't, you don't grab two by accident. That would be something I would definitely do. And then ruin a block. I know you would never do that, but that's something I would do because I, I just do stuff like that. All right, I'm looking at it and making sure it looks beautiful, top and bottom, as close as I can get. And let's move it a little this way. That looks good. All right, here we go. Here's one cut. I feel like you really have to have a rotating mat. You've got to be really mindful. Oh my goodness. So I have two. And this, actually, that just came undone. And this one is hanging on by a thread. Beautiful. Okay, next. Let's just keep going. Here, why don't I do one of these? And then you don't have to watch. I won't make you watch the whole thing. This is um, my four and a half by 18 and a half, one of my favorite rulers. I had the three and a half by 18 and a half, but I like this, an extra inch, but it's not too wide. I'm gonna lay it down so I can get three cuts and you are doing four and a half, which is the width of the ruler by eight and a half. So I am gonna go ahead and fussy cut it to that. It's a little hard to see and, you know, I need to be looking over it. Let me put this over here so I can get my noggin over the thing. Actually, I think I am going to nest because I'm having trouble seeing through the frosted part on here. So I'm going to grab my four by six. And we're going to nest these. And some people nest them all the time just because it's grippier. So first I'm going to go ahead and I am going to look from top to bottom to make sure I'm in the eight and a half. And that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to put this one in and I'm going to check my sides left and right. We're going to have to slide it over a little bit. It's like gripping, doesn't want to move. What am I sticking on? Okay, that looks good. Left and right, I'm pleased. I'm gonna to look top and bottom again. I'm gonna to pull it towards me a little bit. I'm going to pull it towards me a little bit more. A 
Okay, that looks great. So if you're nesting, you're gonna do this cut and this cut, then we'll do the top and the bottom, and then you'll connect the lines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and all the way up. I'm gonna hold it, rotate my mat, don't let go at any point. And I'm gonna hold it. Now we're gonna remove this one. And we're going to do the top and the bottom, which is now my left and my right. But that's the bottom of the block. You see that. Don't let go. And I don't know if it was just my lighting, because normally I'll just use those rulers. But I just couldn't see through the... Uh, I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I'm just going to kind of get this out of the way. So I can kind of see that edge. I like that. I like ripping my fabric. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish off this edge right here. And that one is done and it's gorgeous. All right, you've seen how I cut it. I'm gonna cut the rest. I'll be right back here when they're all trimmed. Okay, these are all cut and they look magnificent. Now I'm gonna cut my border pieces. So let me grab those and I'm gonna just lay these out. Let me start from the bottom. Oh look, these are almost four and a half inches, but I'm just gonna cut along the um, along the given edge that it has there. And I'm gonna use my 12 inch. And I'm just gonna cut 12 inches at a time. I'm just gonna line it up with that edge. It's a little hard to see because it is the same color. And you know what? Let's cut off this bottom part. Just so we don't have all this stuff hanging around. I'll just go up one side and down the other. I'm just gonna scoop my ruler. Up as I go, I'll just lay this in here, lay this against it, and cut. Lay this down here. And now I'm just going to go down the other side. All right, I'm not gonna make you watch me do the whole thing. I'm just gonna trim around both of my inner and outer border pieces that are already sewn together. I'll be right back. So here are my gorgeous border strips. They are so cute and they are quilted and I love that. And um, here, are, here are the main pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together. I'm just gonna sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Quarter inch seam allowance. And then, um, uh, and then I'm going to stop there because I don't have my glitter. We'll finish this up tomorrow. I will um, see you in just a little bit. 
but you don't need to watch me do this. I'm, I am going to use my handy dandy walking foot with my handy dandy quarter inch sole. I piece with deco bob, so I'm going to use my deco bob and also these all together. Well, I think I so showed you my stitch in the ditch. So let me show you the proper foot right here. This is going to be my quarter inch. While I'm doing this, I am going to heat up my iron because we are going to press with each seam. So let me go ahead and I'm going to grab my clapper. Can't leave home without it. And let me go ahead and piece a couple of these and I'll be back to show you how I press them. I thought I would show you this. So I'm going to just use stitch 103, which is an, a center straight stitch, uh, which will give you a quarter inch with that quarter inch sole. My DF is on because I have that foot plugged in. Make sure you have that foot plugged in. I just love piecing really tight. So when I'm on just a single piece of fabric, like two pieces of cotton, I piece at 1.8. And, you know, sometimes I'll do this at a 2 or a 2.5. Um, and everything else, I just leave the same. I do set this up so it's an auto lift. So this is your auto lift. And what that does is every time, time you take your foot off the foot control, it's going to lift the foot for you. That way you can put in your next two pieces. So I just pieced those. It lifted the foot. I'm going to slot this under and I'm going to go piece this. I don't pin because it's kind of thick and then you get some bunching and it moves the fabric about. So I just take my time, keep everything next to my quarter inch. Uh, sometimes I'll clip. It depends. If I have seams that I'm trying to match, I'll, I'll clip around the seams. And our next two are going to be the Wiseman and the Candles. So these two right here, make sure you have them laid down right. Joy to the world. You don't want it like this. World, joy to the. So I'm just going to match these up. And go ahead. It auto lifted for me. So, and I sew a little bit off of the fabric, so I probably sewed off the fabric about half an inch, and I'll just slot this in near the needle, and we'll do this one. Light fingers, light hands. I'm letting the feed dogs do much, most of the work. I am going to cut this so I can sew this one on. And uh, I chain piece. So I'm going to cut those apart and I'll press everything out all at once. Here's my handy dandy um, cutting gizmo. Oh, it's dirt. It's, it's dusty. It's dusty. Everything in here is dusty. Someday I'll have time to uh, clean. Okay. So now we're going to attach this one to the camel. Let me match them up. match them up. I'm going to start with my needle down so I can just slot my um, my piece up against that. And, you know, if I'm off an eighth of an inch or something like that, little high, little low with these, I'm not too worried about it. It's a pillow. It's a pillow. We weren't threaded, were we? So I use Wonderful Deco Bob when I'm piecing. Um, Deco Bob is an 80 weight thread. And so it's half the diameter, half the thickness of your normal 40 weight thread. And so it's less bulky. And it has the strength of your 40 weight. So it's not like it's going to break or it's cheap. But if you've never tried it, you should try it. Get yourself a spool of Deco Bob. And then these two, let's see what gets matched up. This is the first, and that gets connected to this. There we go. But I'm a believer. There we go. Just slot it under there. The foot's already lifted for you. I, my, um, my machine is set up, so when I step on the foot control, it just lowers the foot. I mean, how nice is that, right? Who can be bothered? I can't be bothered putting the foot down. 
I need the machine to do that. I'm a princess. I'm just kidding. It, those features, though, they're kind of like, um, and I'm just sewing off the fabric since it's so tight. I can just cut. It's not going to come unraveled. Undone. Um, those features, like your automatic lift, um, your, uh, you know, your foot goes down and it, it puts the, um, the presser foot down. Like those are all, I equate those to like a heated seat and a heated steering wheel. Once you have those features in your car, you can't live without them. So Patrick and I traded in my car because I, I did get an electric car and that's what I tool around on most. But um, we had given the kids our old cars. So Violet has Patrick's old car and Kai had my old car. Well, we traded in... Sometimes I'll just hold it there. I don't know, like the belt, there's the belt. And you never want to fight the feed dogs, but the belt's right here and I'm before the belt. So it's not really holding on. And sometimes I'll hold it there and just let it lock the stitch without uh, doing a locking stitch. I'm getting a check and rethread the upper sensor. So let me see what's going on here. Let's go ahead and rethread this upper. I didn't even cut it, so that's why it's long. And let me check my bobbin thread. Bobbin thread. Here we go. So sometimes, like I said, I'll just let it start. I'll let it grab, and then I'll just hold it there. And then I'll let the feed dogs pull it along. What you don't want to do is now that the belt's engaged, the feed dogs are engaged, you don't want to fight that. You don't want to pull against that. That is one of the ways you can knock your machine out of timing, is fighting the feed dogs. You're probably like, wow, she sews really slow. Sometimes I do. That's okay. That's okay. Here we go. Okay, time to press. Let's heat her up. I'm not going to be stitching in the ditch. This gets really bulky, so you don't want to press it to one side. We want to go ahead. About, I was about to show you magical things when my uh, camera just shut right off. I think I... Um, exceeded the amount of video so I had to sit there and like clean out my videos so I'm going to press these from the back side um and I am going to press the seams open and what I like to do is I like to press the seam just like that my, uh, I didn't wait long enough. My iron's not hot. And then I use my best press. And then I give it one more press with the best press. And then I clapper it. And the clapper makes all the difference. Maybe we should do, uh, like a comparison. And I, you know, I don't know if that was quite hot enough because I didn't really let my iron, my iron still heating up. But, um. So same thing, I'm going to, I've got like a little cut in my thumb, my, um, my hands are super dry, so my thumb split. I'm going to have to baby that for the next couple of days. Okay, so press, going to let that heat up a little bit more. Best press, am I almost heated up? Press again. I'm going to do that one again because I, I really didn't let my iron heat up long enough. And clapper. Clapper makes all the difference. I'm a believer. I have. Here's my clapper collection. So this is my like all round clapper that I love. These are my itty bitties. These were a present from Lynn and I love them. And these fit in my hoop so I can clapper in the hoop. And I like that I have rounded and flat edges. And then this is my big bad boy. When I want to get a whole seam all at once when I'm paper piecing, you just, it's just nice to have the right clap. I mean, 
that just looks amazing. You can kind of compare the two. This one, it wasn't quite hot enough, but um, I'll go back to that one. I'm gonna open this up. Here we go. Open up that seam. Okay, press it open. You like my sound effects? Best press it, best press it to get it to really stay. And then clapper. And the clapper will take that heat and distribute it and then um, just hold it there. And into the mat and then back into the fabric. It just does everything. It's like a miracle. And this is magical wood, you know. During the pandemic, I could not get any clappers. And they said because they couldn't get the wood. So um, in a pinch, I'll just use... There was, I can't remember what, what, why. At the time, I only had one clapper. And I think it was like over the holidays and it snowed. And I'd left that clapper at the store because sometimes I'll take my stuff back and, back and forth to the store with me because it's my favorite stuff. And um, so I didn't have a clapper. I used, I have like a little wood cutting board. And I used that instead. It didn't really work that great, but anyhow. Gorgeous. Oh, look at your seams. Look at your seams. Are your seams as beautiful as my seams? If not, get a clapper. Get a clapper. If your seams aren't as beautiful as my seams, you need a clapper. I, uh, you know, I use it. Well, I use it for all this stuff. So when I'm um, just piecing, I always clapper. Um, when I am paper piecing, like you want those seams to be so flat. I mean, you want them to be flat all the time. But uh, when I'm paper piecing, like I am clappering every single seam. I think I, I clapper almost every seam anyways. I think Michelle beats her. <laughs> I think she'll beat her seam sometimes too. Should I just finish the pillow and not do the gold? I have to. I'm like so in the mood to finish this and I'm so sad that I don't have the, uh, the glitter. What is wrong with me? I was there at the store and literally I went and grabbed the, um, I'm going to stitch out the OESD uh, gingerbread windmill. And so I grabbed, I needed a uh, white and red Lux vinyl. I grabbed both of those. And then I looked at Patrick and I go, Patrick, I needed three things. This is only two. What's the other thing? And he, he didn't remember. All right. Those seams are just gorgeous. And look at the front. Is that unbelievable? You guys are like, I finished mine like months ago. Okay, there's the top, which isn't on yet. And then here is the, oh, I have it upside down. This is going to be the bottom. This is going to be the top. And if anything comes off, I'm going to get rid of the very end. Because these are a little bit longer. So, um, but look how close we are. Like I'm getting excited. This is going to be my binding, my, uh, my piping. So I'm going to put it on and it's going to have this just amazing piping that's going to go all the way around. That's going to pull it all together. We'll finish the back. So we're in the home stretch. I will, um, grab that glitter tomorrow and tomorrow night I'm finishing this puppy. And then we're going to have it ready to hang up at the store. Oh, you know what? What One thing I can do um, is let me show you how to do the eyelets. Okay. Eyelet time. Oh, my goodness. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I might, in the meantime, do a, um, do a prep video. I still have to do Cuties November, December. November, December, and I have to do in all things we give thanks. And I still have to do, um, what's the other one? Uh, Merry Christmas, y'all. I know. 
I know. I can't. How, can you believe that? Okay. I'm going to use this. This is uh, the Mini Mats OESD product, and they're so fantastic. I also have this one that's left over from my scrapbooking days. And then in this drawer that says long, straight. Nope, not in there. In this drawer? In, in this? I need this because... Uh, because... I have a lot of dog hair all over everything. Where, oh, you know what? Look at it. It's right here sitting on top. Okay, here's my eyelet punch. This is an OESD product. It's called Perfect Punch. I was making really little holes recently, so I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to put one that has like bigger holes in it. I'm actually going to punch one of these holes, and that's going to be it. And the reason for that, and I love this because don't you love that? Like it's horrible having to go looking for your, your little bits. Um, and they just get stored right here in the top. So I'm going to change it to the next size up. I'm going to put this one away. And you're going to put this tip on. You're going to screw it on. The reason I am not going to do all the holes is because... Um, hang on a second. Let me do this. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to stay without it popping up. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm not going to do all the holes uh, because I'm going to rhinestone it. I love the fairy lights and I love the way they look. However, I am the type that leaves the uh, lights on and then I get one use out of it. So there are your little eyelets. You see those right there? You're just going to put that right on top of your mat. Don't do it on your self-healing mat because it leaves little divots in it. I mean, if you're going to ruin a mat, let's ruin this guy right here. It comes in a two-pack. I think they're $5.99. And they're called mini mats if you want to get them on the website. So we are just going to take this, put it right over that hole. And with two hands, hang on one second. Let me do this. I need my two hands. So I'm going to do this one right here. I'm going to put this in here and I'm just going to push down and that's it. Ta-da! Hole is made. So if you want to go ahead and go punch all your holes, you can punch all your holes. I think there are three holes per tile, per block. Um, and then you can feed your lights through. I am not going to, again, I'm not going to be putting the lights in. I'm going to rhinestone it. I've never rhinestoned before. Um, I've never done hot fix rhinestones, but Michelle is an expert. So I'm going to have her show me how to do it, right? Because, uh, why figure it out when you can have an expert teach you? And I think that's it. I will, uh, start the video again as soon as I get that glitter. Hey everyone. I am working really hard to get my nativity pillow done. I know a lot of you are already done with it. Um, I am on the step right now where I'm going to be adding my um, my glitter. And I know a lot of you bought the embellishment kit. This was, I think, the first embellishment kit I didn't buy. Um, and so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do whatever was on page 35, and I'm going to cut out my sand, which looks pretty easy. It looks like I could probably do it on my own, but let's go ahead and use the template. Sometimes thinking is fun, or and sometimes not thinking is fun. So this is going to be the not thinking way of doing it. So you do need your glitter, your roll of glitter, and what you're going to do is you, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out just on this bottom line. I'm going to rough cut it, and I'll rough cut it around here. This I'll put it right on my template, and I'll cut it exactly the way it is, and I'll probably go ahead and tape it together. So um, I'm going to go grab some scissors, and I will cut these out just on the line and tape them together, and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and cut it all out. I cut it on the line. I taped it together. I, uh, I just used packing uh painter's shape and I cut off the top too because now it wants you to trace it onto your glitter so when you trace it onto your glitter you just need to make sure don't remove the uh, protective carrier because it's got that plastic film leave that plastic film on there because you don't want the I'm going to be using a sharpie you don't want that sharpie to be showing through um, you could do it all on the back side too it wouldn't make a difference whatever works 
you're not going to know from one direction or the other. So yeah, if you wanted to go ahead and do the backside, we could do that too. It, the Sharpie might show up better on the backside um, than the protective carrier. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this edge up here. It's curly, so that'll make it a little bit challenging, but whatever. Um, the other thing you could do is you could just kind of clip it on there. We could wonder clip it and just, just cut. How about we just do that? I'm just going to wonder clip it. And then we'll just cut it. No Sharpie at all. I'm going to do it on this back side though. Because uh, maybe that will make it easier because it, like I said, it is curly. Anything to make it quicker and easier to me. Necessity is the mother of invention. And I'm necessitating this to be fast and quick so we can get on to our next project that I haven't finished. I was hoping that if I had time, I could work on in all things give thanks because we need to be thankful at Christmas time too. So I'm not late. I'm right on time. That's what I keep telling myself. And we are going to have to piece this together. Like I'm going to have to do a row and then I'll have to do like another row. This is perfect because it makes it stick up a little bit, right? Am I going to have to do a row and then one more fatty clip? Okay, so that gets me to the end of this. So you're going to have to cut two rows. Here we go. All right, scissors. I'm gonna use, let's use these. These are my Kai scissors and I love these. If you don't have a pair of scissors this size in your collection, you should get it. Cause sometimes you just don't need to use those big old shears, right? Let's put this on the end. I'll put these on the end so it kind of holds it there, right? Here we go. Oh, now we're just gonna cut. And this line is really subtle, like it doesn't move a lot. It, it feels almost straight, but it's not. There's a little bit of movement there. Do the best you can. And maybe it would have been worth it for me just to buy the embellishment kit so I didn't have to do this. And a lot of you, uh, yours came in your embellishment kit. So it was, like, I really feel like I'm cutting a straight line, am I? It's not, right? I'm going to cut this from the... Uh, Okay, let's move these now. Sorry, are you getting just a shot of my shoulder? It's hard because it's uh, curly. And then everything's curling on top of itself. What are you seeing there? No, almost nothing, huh? And... We're done. Okay, so I just did sections one and two. Now we're going to go ahead and lay this down and let's do uh, the rest of it. It is a really subtle line. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go ahead and cut across here and use that same line as the other side. So I'm going to put this down here and just see where I need it to be. And I'm just going to cut cut right across that. This is about a little less than half an inch. A little less than half an inch. I'm going to just cut across a little bit half an inch. Because, I mean, really, we don't have to have that be perfect. If that makes you uncomfortable, lay down your template again. But that makes me totally comfortable. It is a little, 
I'm going to go all the way across and it's a little bit more and a little bit, oh wait, that's my half an inch. Oh, do you see? It's a I'm sorry. It's a little bit more than half an inch. Good thing I didn't just cut a little bit more than half an inch and it's kind of just undulating. So I'm just going to lay this down and then we'll make that edge fit. Here we go. Just like that. And then we don't have to lay that down and do all of that silliness. Oh, put this down right here. Scoot this up. Let me see. He's coming up a little bit, so... One edge with the template, the other edge just with my ruler. And I'm happy. Okay? And let's see. If this doesn't fit perfectly, I'll just go ahead and trim that so it fits perfectly. Um, there's my one. And I don't, I don't really care. I'm just going to go ahead and trim that so it's a perfect match. There we go. And then we didn't have to do that whole thing, right? Easy. Whatever works. I'm going to go ahead and take this all off. Let's heat up our iron because we are going to be adhering it. And then we have a nice piece of glitter that we can use on our next project. And that is called fudging it, which is what we just did. Hope you're okay with fudging it. Sometimes I do that. I always think I'm like such a rule follower and I never stray, but sometimes I do. And I don't think I'm going to need this again. If I do, I can print it. So if you're going to do multiples of that, but that's how I would do it, right? So we are going to go ahead and it says right here, um, glitter, glitter, glitter. Uh, arrange the blocks. We did that. Peel the plastic film from the drifting sand glitter. Align the left and bottom edge of the drifting sand glitter with the edges of this center unit. The drifting sand glitter will be longer than the unit and you will slightly overlap the applique at the bottom of each block. A pre-cut, this is what I did. A pre-cut drifting sand glitter shape is included in the embellishment kit oh no i didn't do that that's what you guys have if you got the embellishment kit to cut your own this is what i did see the drifting sand pattern on 35 using a press cloth press the glitter with a warm iron for 15 to 20 seconds removing the tape as you go do not touch the iron directly to the mylar or the glitter stars on the block allow the glitter to cool so i'm going to use my um if I can find it, I'm going to use my, let me find it. I'm looking for my goddess pressing sheet. Okay, here is my, um, this is my pressing sheet. This is the goddess pressing sheet. I've had a couple different pressing sheets, and to me, this one's the best. Except sometimes you cut off a corner because you don't see it. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, well, let me get my ends matched up so I know which to start with. So, and you want your flat end. That looks perfect. So I'm going to lay this one down first. I'm going to start here at the bottom left. And I'm going to peel back my protective coat. I like to peel back, like, the plastic part. I'm going to take my whole thing off. Here we go. And let's go ahead and lay it down and we are gonna press it there. Looks pretty good.
That looks good too. Oh, it's going to be so cute. Okay, let's lay that down. almost laid my iron right down on top of the glitter which you don't want to do it's not going to be the end of the world but make sure you have something in between get rid of this sometimes I press on a wool mat on a wool mat if I'm doing something that has a lot of steam because I press on a wool mat on a wool mat on my cutting mat and I've worked my cutting mat from having uh having um too much moisture I don't know if anyone's ever warped a cutting mat but I have okay here we go so we're going to overlap that glitter a little bit on the bottom. So let me go ahead and grab this. Again, I like to, there's my protective coating there. Don't leave it on there. I like to bend back on that protective coating and usually it'll separate pretty easily. There we go. And I'm peeling the whole thing. All right. So I'm going to overlap this. There's my curvy edge. Nobody will ever even know. They'll be like, oh, where did you get that big seamless piece of glitter? And you're going to go, oh my goodness, they didn't even see my join. I'm amazing. Okay, here we go. Just lay this down. Oops, sorry, my head hitting the camera. I was hoping to sew a lot this weekend and I got no sewing done at all. Patrick and I were actually at the store working on uh, Christmas orders because it's that time of year. We are the Christmas elves of A1 Vacuum and Sewing. Wouldn't that be amazing if there was, there were really Christmas elves. But just got everything done. Well, there really are. And their names are Patrick and Janie. Okay, I don't want to press that last. There's a little itty bitty bit. Do you see it peeking out? I don't want to press that onto my wool mat. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to snip it off. And I think, oh my goodness, it looks just amazing. The glitter just looks amazing. It just does. Believe it or not, I just threw that piece away. Here we go. Whoop. And was I supposed to fringe this? I'm just looking at it going... I did not fringe that. Okay, hang on. I'm going to pause. So I was supposed to fringe this. We did all that work switching everything, and I totally forgot. So I'm going to see what kind of fringe I can get out of it. Um, quite honestly, my glitter's kind of high, and if I did it over again, which you know I can't really do right now because I did a pretty good job adhering it, um, I might have cut it a little bit lower so you could really get the full effect of that. I'll put a little note in there that says, don't forget to fringe your hay. Is it hay? Don't forget to fringe it. All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to sew now 
this top, make sure you're mindful of the writing. So here you can see that this is the orientation because you can see that word Lord. That's going to go on top. And this one, I did it so the same orientation so you can read it again is going to go on the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and sew those on on my sewing machine. I'll see you over there. All right, so I am over here at my machine, and uh, there is one other thing we need to do before we attach the top and the bottom, is we do need to top stitch the glitter. It wants you to go ahead and top stitch it at the top edge. So I'm gonna go into sewing on my machine. I'm gonna leave it at a stitch length of 2.5 and a center straight stitch. I need to put on my walking foot. And I like to show this because it's so easy to do it. And if you are not using your walking foot, you need to be using it. It is the best walking foot on the market. So um, again, this should never be loose enough for you to undo by hand. So you're going to go ahead and undo this. This is the best screwdriver out there. It's the advanced screwdriver. So if you want to get it, we have it on our website. Just type in advanced and it should pop up. And right now for the holidays, it's 25% off. This goes on from the back. The screw goes right here. So you're just gonna slide it on from the back. You are going to hand tighten. And then you're gonna take your screwdriver and give it one more little turn, wait for it to catch. I know it's hard to see, there we go. Oops, whoops, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Where am I, there, it caught. And just turn it towards you just the tiniest bit. You're not cranking it. You're just like tightening it. If you don't, and then it just plugs in right here in the back. So there is a little, little inny here in the back. Plug it on in. If you don't plug it in, it doesn't work and you go, wait a minute, this thing is horrible. Yes, it's horrible if you don't plug it in. This, these are interchangeable soles. This is my quarter inch. You just push down and it comes right off. You have these little nubby bars right here. Do you see them? Like there's one right there and there's one right there. There's corresponding grooves. I'm gonna do my open toe so I can see and just push up and that's it. Easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and use my sand thread because it looks so good. It looks, uh, it looks like gold. So if there's some colors that you should definitely get, I would get sand if you want us to get them for you. Um, we don't carry the whole line of Glide just because we already carry Isocord. Uh, should I carry Glide too? What do you think? We just don't have the space. If you've ever been to my store, it's kind of messy and there's a lot of stuff because I can't stop shopping. I have a problem. Don't tell Patrick, although he knows. Okay. I'm just going to top stitch this down. So just follow the line of that thread. I'm just going to go about an eighth of an inch. I'm eyeballing it. Oh, my foot is too far. Hang on. There we go. And the open toe is really nice because you can see, right? And this is where you go, oh, it really isn't a straight line. And I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to do it the best I can. And... Just so, okay? So let me go ahead and tap stitch. I'm going about an eighth of an inch. Or a sixteenth of an inch, like right there. Make sure those seams are laying flat in the back. There's my fringe. There's my fringe. I, you know what? I'm not even going to fringe it. I decided in my head. Because what's going to fringe? There's going to be like the little idiot bitty, bitty bit. Just making sure that's laying flat in the back. I just have one of my white pre one bobbins in the bottom. I, I sew with those all the time. Because why not? It's just a polyester thread. And we are top stitched. And like, you can't even see it. You like, 
it is hard to even see. Okay, I am going to go ahead and put on, here we go, this one first. Just look at it and make sure when you flip it back, you can read your writing. If you want it in that orientation, if you don't, if you want it mirrored, then you're going to do it differently. And let's see if this is going to be pretty matched up. It is. It is not. So I'm going to start on this end where it says joy, you know, because you want to be able to read that joy to the world. <clears throat> and I can flip it over. I can flip it this way. Because I want to be able to see that whole joy to the world. And if you want to, you can, oh, we need our other foot. So I'm going to quarter inch this. Let me pop this out. And if you look, my needle came unthreaded, so I'm going to rethread. I don't know why it came undone, but it did. I'll just leave that same sand in. Mm, yeah, I'm just going to leave it in. And I'm just going to kind of match it as I go. A lot of times, because your belt is all the way back here, do you see it? So it doesn't engage always right away. So I can just hold it there and let it do a locking stitch for me. And then I'll just kind of let it go. And there's the belt. The belt is making contact and engaging. And just match your edges as you go. Make sure it doesn't flip back your seams. Quite a bit left over but you know what I wanted the beginning I could have centered it and then it would have cut off on both ends so I figured we'd have a full word on the beginning I'm gonna lock this there we go and then we'll trim that edge off okay so this is the bottom joy to the world let earth rejoice uh, her kin is that what we're that's what we're gonna have on ours okay let's do the top this looks so amazing this morning I got up and I was like I am finishing that pillow okay we're again we're gonna do this one let me just flip it over and I'm gonna have it match on the beginning the end there's gonna be some excess here we go. I'm just holding it there just so it can lock that stitch. Don't fight your feed dogs. Don't do that when you're, you know, when you're regular sewing on your machine uh, without the dual feed because the feed dogs are grabbing it right away. My feed dogs are grabbing it. That's what's pulling it along. But I can just kind of hold it there just for it to lock that stitch. If I don't feel like turning on my locking stitch, of course, you can just turn on your locking stitch and then that does everything for you. Here we go. Let me move this thread out of the way. It's my all in all thing gives give thanks thread. 
have a seam under there, just make sure it's laying flat both ways. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna trim off those edges. Let's come on over here. Let's come back over. Let's put this away and it, so it doesn't get stuck underneath and cut. <laughs> There's so many cut marks. Get that. I'm just gonna cut it from this side. And we had so much. So funny how we had so much on one piece and not so much on the other. Should have been the same length. Here we go. And let's go ahead and we're gonna give this a little bit of a press. So if you haven't done it, you do need to unfringe, but I'm just gonna leave mine. I just made the executive decision that I am just gonna leave it. Okay, so um, we top stitch, measure the length. I did that after, um, after I cut it off. Uh, the drifting sand glitter sewing into the seam, trim the outer border the same length as the pillow front, trimming half of the excess length from each end and arrange the top and bottom as shown. We already did that, right? So the outer border to the top and bottom of the pillow front. We just did that. Now I'll refer to option one of the quilting. If you, nope, we've already quilted. Um, I am going to go ahead and press this. And sometimes with something like this, I'll just see if there's like a natural press. And I think it's just going to be like that. I'm not going to open up the seams. I'm just going to go ahead and press it just like that. And actually, you might want to get that press cloth again because you don't want to press the mylar or the stars in here. I'm just going to go ahead and let's go ahead and press it just the way it is to relax the stitches and settle that seam. I'm waiting for my iron to heat up. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and press it just the way it is first. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I don't do this. But if I'm feeling good, then I will go ahead and do it. We're going to just press the whole length. Right. And so I'm going to go just press backwards that way and I'm going to give it a little shot of spray Iron Maiden. That is my best press. And um, you know what? I am going to just watch out for those stars because I want to be able to see. So I'm just watching out for the glitter and the mylar.
and uh, make sure you punch your eyelets. If you haven't already punched them, punch your eyelets. If you're putting in the twinkle lights. I am not putting in the twinkle lights. I'm going to have Miss Michelle show me how to put in those, those glittery, uh, what do you call them? The like rhinestones. We'll bling it with some rhinestones. Which I've never done before, so. Okay, okay I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom part. This pillow is really kind of spectacular. I just love it. Okay, this side I am definitely going to have to um, uh, use that pressing sheet. So I'm not even going to do the best press. I'm just going to press it back. I got too much going on down here with all that glitter. Okay, here we go. Doesn't that look just amazing? I love it. Um, I'm going to do the rest of this on my serger. So I'm just going to kind of show you little bits of snippets. I already made my cording and this is a metallic grunge, which I absolutely love. If you look right here, you can see I left my machine on wave in the very beginning and then I was like, wait, that doesn't look right. And then I figured it out and switched it back over. But um, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the front of my pillow. And then I, I'm going to do my back. I know that they had shown it with the zipper down on the bottom. But I'm just going to do uh, the zipper right in the middle of the back. And um, I'm just going to, I usually like to do my zipper about one third of the way down. And all I had was a white zipper. So there is a white zipper that's going to go on it, but I figure it's going to be in the back. I don't carry a lot of these. So this is a 40 inch white zipper. We carry these in the store. And I'm going to go ahead and put that about a third of the way down um, and then put it all together. I will show you what my pillow top looks like after I put my cording on the front. Be right back. Okay, so I've attached my piping to my uh, pillow front, and I always put piping on because it makes such a huge difference having that piping as opposed to just sewing the front to the back. And I do a class, I have a class on um, making a serger pillow with piping. So I'll do that again sometime maybe in January or February. Let me get through what I need to get through and then we'll do that. Now I also did my zipper. So um, here is the zipper and it's white, but that's okay because it's going to be the back. And um, I like to have my zipper pull on the left hand side and I did third. So I did six inches and 12 inches down here. I'm going to go ahead and serge my pillow back to my pillow front and I'll be back with the finished product. So I don't have a pillow form here, so you're not going to see it all big and fluffy. I'll put one in when I get to the store. Um, but here is my piping, which I feel like totally makes the pillow. Um, and I love it in the gold. I was worried that it was going to stand out too much, but I think it looks fantastic. And here's my pillow back with my zipper. 
So I can just go ahead and unzip it, put my pillow in, and be done with it. Everything's got a nice finished clean edge because I did everything on my serger. These edges are all done and finished as well. So everything is absolutely gorgeous. And that is it. We are done with the nativity pillow. Can you believe it? I'm so happy. I do have to trim off some of my threads. But other than that, I'm ecstatic with this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And thank you so much for joining me for this pillow. And we will see you for the next project. Thanks so much. Bye.